Good evening. This is CTV News for Tuesday, June 21st. I'm Patricia Vallone. And I'm Denise Douglas. Thank you for joining us tonight. Well, it is day two of the second phase of Metro's repairs, and that means another day of shuttle buses and other route changes for many com commuters. At the Largo Metro Station, three buses waited for people who needed to be transported. Mache Robinson caught one of them to be able to get to work, while many say they have had to get up earlier and get through all those lines and stuff and delays and challenges. Robinson says his employer is cutting him some slack in getting to work. Yes, it's been a little inconvenience. I mean, I get to work 30 minutes later than what I normally get. Have you had to, like, adjust your schedule in the morning or your employer allows you to get to work a bit later? They allow me. I told them ahead of time because I didn't know which way it was going to go. So. Do you, because Metro has suggested other people try to take other options, whether it's like telecommute or carpool, any of those work for you at all, or is this? No, nah, no, ma'am. I, I'd rather catch the Metro. That's what I'm used to doing. And all the carpooling, when I tried it, it never worked out for me. I was always the only one, so that's why I just continue to catch the Metro. The repairs on the orange, blue, and silver lines will continue, as you've probably heard, until July 3rd. The overall project will take a year to complete. There are many people who are trying to avoid commuting hassles and all of that altogether and are switching routes. According to Metro, ridership is up 23% at the Greenbelt Station and 33% at the College Park location. Officials with the agency have urged riders to find alternative routes during the 16-day shutdown on the orange, blue, and silver lines. They also suggest that people find other options for working, like teleworking or using flexible office schedules. While the Maryland State Police Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force makes 46 arrests as part of a nationwide initiative targeting child predators. And CTV's Karen Adams is here now with all of those details. Karen, so tell us what this is about. Well, I can tell you that the Maryland ICAC task force opened nearly 200 investigations back in April and May across the state during Operation Broken Heart 3. Now, the coordinated effort, 61 task forces nationwide, targeted people who were engaging in child pornography, the online solicitation of children, and the sex trafficking of minors. Now, it paid off. Maryland ICAC agencies executed 86 search warrants and arrested also, 46 people. Proactive manner where we're in, online and in a undercover capacity, and individuals are trying to solicit us for um, for sexual gain. The task force's primary goal is to protect children from computer-facilitated sexual exploitation. So it not only goes after child predators, but also educates the public on internet safety with outreach sessions and programs. Sounds like a great program. There. Absolutely. Now, investigators have educated more than 2,300 people so far, and their public session sessions have reached more than 700 people. All right. Thank you, yes. Karen. Well, U.S. Attorney General Loretta Lynch met with the victims of the Orlando massacre as well as first responders. She was also updated on the investigation before a news briefing. Lynch pledged $1 million in emergency funds dedicated to law enforcement and other agencies to help them deal with overtime, overtime and counseling issues. Now, the Attorney General also says federal funds have been set aside to help the families of victims with travel expenses and medical issues. As for the investigation into the shooting that left 49 people or 49 victims dead and 53 others injured, Lynch says it is active and ongoing and that they're doing all they can to learn more about the shooter, Omar Mateen. Meantime, the U.S. Senate rejects four gun control measures. Two of the bills were Democratic measures. Two were Republican-sponsored. The proposals come in the wake of the Orlando massacre, in which we said 49 people were killed and 53 others injured. The Democrats sponsored a bill that would have barred all gun sales to individuals on the terror watch list. The Republican version would have delayed and potentially barred gun sales to those on the list. Senator Barbara Mikulski took to the floor, saying the bills would not impede citizens' rights against terrorists getting guns and the other expending, extending background checks to the internet sales and to gun show sales. Now, I come from a state with a proud heritage of hunting. It's part of our way of life in many parts of our state. We respect that. But this will in no way impede anybody from being able to do that. And yet we had to filibuster to get a vote. 
A group of senators is still hoping to forge a compromise later in the week. Well, Prince George's County is under a severe thunderstorm watch. The National Weather Service says that the notice is in effect until 9 tonight. A flash flood warning has also been issued for Langley Park and Beltsville. Until 5.30 p.m., motorists are urged not to drive in flooded roadways.